Hello everybody, Jonathan Reeves here with another Vectorworks video. Now today is super exciting, it's the release date of Vectorworks 2022. I'm so excited, I can hardly wait. There's some amazing new features, you're going to see improvements in 3D and rendering, new outputs for drafting, also some really nice collaborative features as well. So let's get started with this new features video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe for the next videos coming soon. talk about now is a very exciting new development in 3D rendering for Vectorworks which is a new twin motion direct link. So I'm just going to show you a little project that I'm working on at the moment. Um, it's for a nice little simple uh, home office extension here and you can see I've just got a number of design layers which I can turn on and off at the moment. So I'm just going to strip that back so you can see this exploded view. Now, the rendering looks great in Vectorworks, and we'll be talking about some of the new rendering modes in Vectorworks as well, but there's nothing quite like having a real-time rendering software available, and Twinmotion is the one that I absolutely love because it works on the Mac and the PC. Now, all we need to do to access this tool is go onto the visualization palette. We can undock this if needed, and down here you'll notice a brand new Datasmith Direct Link tool. So let's click onto that tool here, and you'll see up in the mode bar, there's a couple of simple options. All we need to do then is let's have a quick look into the settings, is we can choose the level of detail that we would like for our model. Um, bear in mind that medium or high are probably the best settings to use, particularly if you've got lots of curved geometry, sometimes very high if you're doing lots of very detailed work. I'm going to go for a high level. I'm going to click OK. And then the next thing we do is basically click onto this button here, which is the export direct link. So once we've clicked this the very first time, we'll get a progress bar, which will basically tell us that Vectorworks is setting up the Datasmith direct link. And you can actually see the location of where this file is actually being generated as well, if you're interested. Now it only takes a few seconds, which is really nice. Then it prompts us down here to say, say the changes have been sent to the direct link. And now all we need to do is go to Twin Motion and set the link up. So the very first time in Twin Motion, we just go to the Import tab, go to, uh, instead of opening, we go to the Import Direct link, and you automatically should see the source document loaded in. Now you could always select different ones if needed. And then finally, there's only three different options, uh, Collapse All, keep Collapse by Material, or Keep Hierarchy. Now this is how you actually import the model into Twinmotion. I normally use the Keep Hierarchy, and basically that replicates my structure of my Vectorworks file. But slightly for smaller files will be generated if you use Collapse by Material. Let's just keep it simple for now. Click OK. Now the very first time you um, link it in, it will basically say Direct Link Processing, and it will just process the file. I'm not sure why the screen flashes red, but just close your eyes when that happens, that's fine. And you can see over here is our model. So if we just click F to fit, here we are in Twin Motion now, straight in our Twin Motion real-time rendering environment, and you can see the models come in absolutely perfectly with all the textures applied as well. Now if we did want to, we could open up the bar here, and we could actually sort of manage visibilities of various aspects of the model as well. But now what we're going to do is just pop back into Vectorworks and essentially turn on these other two layers. Let's do this. Uh, let's go forward and just click the direct link again. Now here's where you see the difference. Once the direct link is actually set up, not only is the direct link export pretty rapid, um, all we'll need to do is click back into Twin Motion, and automatically it will start generating. So you can see it's finished here in Vectorworks. If I go back to Twin Motion, it will already be importing in the background. Um, so by the time I've actually uh, done anything, it will be there. So here is the new model just imported. So what a fantastic new direct link capability we have. And as I say, what's really, really nice is the structure of the Vectorworks model is intact. So I can actually turn off these individual layers and kind of interrogate my project in any way I would like to. So, you know, we're not really going to talk too much about the features of Twin Motion today. I've done plenty of videos on this, but what we're focusing on is the new direct link tool, uh, the ability of Twin Motion to do kind of real-time rendering and enhance your models is just unsurpassed. 
So just to finish off on this amazing new Twin Motion and Vectorworks collaboration, I just wanted to play out with a few shots from a nice project that I've been working on, just to show you some nice finished results. And I would love it if you would join us for a new Vectorworks and Twin Motion webinar we're having next week on the 21st of September, hosted by Epic Games. I'm pleased to be a part of that. So I'll put the link in the description and please come and join us for that event. So the next new exciting feature we're going to talk about is also carrying on the theme of rendering. We now have some new wonderful built-in render modes, redshift rendering, and a new hidden line multi-processing non-blocking rendering mode. You're going to notice that if you go up to the rendering bar, you'll notice that OpenGL is now not mentioned anymore. Now, this has been superseded by Apple with the new metal graphics built in. So we've changed this to now shaded mode and essentially this replaces the old OpenGL uh, shading mode, but it's basically the same type of process. So that's just this reference here. Now, what you will notice on Vectorworks 2022 is if you're running on an Apple M1 processor, you're gonna get a dramatic speed boost because it's running natively now rather than just under the emulation of the Rosetta uh, emulation side. So one thing that I also wanted to mention on this little topic is, if we go over to my sheet layers for a minute, and let's just have a look, quick look at some of these elevations. Uh, this project was done using OpenGL rendering, just nice, simple, fast rendering. But what I have been playing with now is a few other of the new rendering modes, and I'll just show you how to access this in a minute. And this is the new Redshift and the new Hidden Line speed up. So here we go. You can see that OpenGL is still gonna be probably your fastest bet. But in terms of kind of reflections and graphics, it's not probably the best quality. Final Quality Renderworks is always a nice looking uh, render quality. But the downside with Final Quality, as many of you will know, is probably the speed. So this one seemed to take a long, long time. And this is 300 DPI. Now I've achieved pretty much the same quality using the new redshift rendering again at 300 dpi in only 17 seconds so really really good compromise between the open gel speed and the quality so it's only you know double the length of time and you can see we get a really really nice quality of rendering so definitely check out the new render mode for this if you want to access it all you do you select the viewport you go into the render settings and you go to renderbook style and you'll notice that they're actually integrated in here. Um, what you can actually do is select a default and then you can go to the background render settings and edit that via the resources browser. So just click into that tab for a second. Okay, that's good. And let's just go to our RenderWix styles menu. This will filter out and you can see I've got the various sort of redshift rendering styles here. Now, if you right click and edit those, you're gonna see all the various sort of settings behind them. Um, and here we go, Redshift by Maxon pops up. So there's lots of nice kind of extra effects here like denoising, and that will make a much smoother image, um, but still render quite rapidly. You can also change all the different sort of levels of quality and the different sampling methods. So lower quality, you know, lower sampling will speed up the render, uh, higher settings will look better, but take a bit longer. And you can also apply things like environmental lighting and ambient lighting, which I'm not sure I've done in this image at all. So I'm really looking forward to trying out the new Redshift rendering with various sort of settings. And I love the fact you can actually save these as various styles. So each style can have your own unique look to it. So that's something I'm super excited about. Um, the final thing I just wanted to mention was also the hidden line calculations. Now, traditionally with Vectorworks, when you do hidden line views, they're what they call blocking. Uh, they actually kind of stop you from doing any other activity. But now with Vectorworks, we can actually kind of basically update and actually go and do some other activities. And you can see the Renderworks teapot icon here. So this does mean it will slow the computer down a little bit, but at least I'm not blocked. I'd have to wait for that viewport. I can actually go and do some other activities uh, on different design layers if needed, or even in a different vectorworks file. And when I'm ready, it will kind of indicate that this is finished. And basically I'll be able to just go back and see the viewport rendered. So not only is hidden line a lot faster, the fact that it's non-blocking means that it doesn't interrupt your workflow. And that's really, really nice in terms of a speed boost. So I'm looking forward to trying that. Things like sections, you know, you always have to wait for them to be updated. Um, but this will mean that you can actually get on and do your other work. 
So some extra lovely features, the Redshift rendering, the new hidden line multi-processing and also non-blocking rendering. And you can see that was pretty quick actually for a complex model with lots and lots of detail in as well. So I hope you're looking forward to trying that out. I certainly am. And definitely looking forward to seeing what the community comes up with the, uh, the new RefShift capabilities. So I've only really just started to dabble in that. But looking impressive so far. So now another new amazing feature that's guaranteed to revolutionize your workflow, per face texture mapping with Vectorworks 2022. Ooh. So just to show you how this is going to work, I'm going to knock up a very quick, simple little model using my Vectorworks 3D tools. And if you haven't seen the latest capabilities of the current Vectorworks, um, you're in for an absolute treat. There were some big improvements in Vectorworks 2020, one, and basically you'll see, just demonstrating a couple of those, things like the ability to basically directly extrude into a face and also directly add on as well. Now these are just the modes here. Okay, so I've got a really simple building. I'm just going to do one more thing actually before we carry on. Go to one of my favorite little tools, the shell tool. I'm going to shell those walls out by say 300 mil and let's just go inside. So already I'll tick the model. Fantastic. So I've got a really basic little kind of massing model and if I really wanted to now, you know, I could go and sort of chop out a few more openings, just sort of subtract some additional things in there quite rapidly. One of the things I've always loved about Vectorworks is the history. So when I double click into the history, I can edit the solid. That means that I can actually select that window, for example, and duplicate along just to create a few more openings. Okay, good. Now, none of that is new. That's just reminding you how brilliant Vectorworks is. Here's the new features. So what I'd like to do is texture up this model. Normally, if you were to go to your resources, select some brick, for example, and drag that material onto the model, it would apply to the whole thing, which isn't necessarily what you're looking for. So now what we can do with the new texturing tool is select the tool, go to the per face mode, go up to it, select the texture itself. And uh, an extra little feature here is I've just got my wonderful JRA libraries of textures. These are bespoke libraries that I've created. I sell these on the website if you're interested. So I can basically select the brick here. And basically now I can just simply click to assign to some specific faces that particular material. Now don't worry if the mapping isn't correct. Okay, all you need to do there is go over to the object info palette. And you'll notice on the render tab now, you can basically go per face and simply change the mapping to what's required. And actually that's incredibly useful because it means also if you did want to, you could sort of scale and so on as well. Now, I don't want to do the scaling, but I do just want to change to auto align plane. Okay, so let's carry on texturing up our model a bit more. We'll go to the texture tool once more. We'll go up to our texture library and let's just go and choose maybe a different type of brick just for fun. And we'll click to assign those textures there. Let's just spin our model around. I think we'll assign that texture onto there as well. Okay, that's cool. All I need to do here is just assign the auto align plane. Same on that texture face there, just to kind of sort my model out. Now, previously you would have had to do quite a bit of extracting of surfaces. Now that may still be desirable if you're looking to actually kind of like model the roof in a bit more detail and so on. But when you just sort of sketch modeling, this is super, super fast. And it just means that you can select directly the textures you need. And let's see if we've got a nice sort of material for the roof or something. Let's have a look. Yeah, we'll go for a nice bit of uh, copper metal roof. Click onto that face there. Brilliant. And the nice thing is that I can select those two and just scale them up together, which is nice. The fact you can actually do that, you can even replace them if needed. So I really, really like this new approach. You can also, if you would like to, go into your resources. And this is how you actually apply the materials directly from here. All you need to do is select the texture, start to drag, and rather than applying to the whole model, you hold the command key down. Okay, so that will apply just to that one surface. And then if you do want to, if you hold, I think it's command and shift, let's try, command and shift, you can see now I'm applying it to replace all of the brick on that model. Really, really cool. So once again, let's click onto our overwrite here. Here's my wood texture. Scale that down a little bit just for the appropriate type. 
Uh, I could rotate it around if I wanted to. So what do you think of the new texturing tools? I think these are really going to speed up the um, sort of rapid conceptual design side of Vectorworks. Now I've been talking about this for years. It's actually an amazing bit of software for basically 3D modeling quite rapidly. But this, I think, will be something that our users will really like and it will really kind of be creative in terms of your modeling and texturing approaches. Well, everybody, I think that's everything for this very first video on the new features of Vectorworks 2022. There's lots of exciting new features I'd like to show you on the rest of the videos. So please do subscribe to the channel and come and join us. If you'd like to find out more, come and visit my website, Jonathan Reeves CAD. And I'd be very pleased to help with any advice you need, any training or sales or anything at all. Just let me know. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.